Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be watching Sarafina. Some of y'all know it, some of y'all don't know it. I used to watch this thing back in the day. You know, my grandparents used to have like a VHS tape. Every Christmas you'd come around and you'd have a little good old musical. I'm starting off with a classic, you know. So, wish me luck. <laughs> Sarafina is a movie that was released in 1992 based on a 1987 musical by Bongeni Gema, directed by Derek Rod. Rod? I don't know. Written by Mbongeni Gemma and William Nicholson. Starring Whoopi Goldberg, Miriam Makeba, and obviously the main character, Sarafina, played by Leleti Kumalo. I have a crush on Leleti Kumalo. She can still get it. I'll cut that out. I'll, I'll cut that out. It was filmed on location in Soweto, based on an uprising by students back in the day. So, yeah, this should be fun. Starts with Miramax. I mean, you know, a movie's old when Miramax is upon us. Fun fact the producer, and his name is Annette Singh, or si what are these names? Uh, couldn't get funding from Hollywood movies, so he had to like fund this himself. And yeah, shout out to him. Uh, the movie starts with a classic train and kids running in the middle of the morning. They break into a school with petrol bombs, and one of them straight up yeets and destroys the classroom i mean i guess they were learning about fire that day we could call that chemistry ah, bad jokes i know i know i know we're introduced to sarafina and she's looking at you know our lord and savior nelson mandela and she's obviously in a room filled with six other children i mean uh, you're introduced to the family and the dynamics that go along with you know having a big family in such a small house and i think that they they portray this kind of well because i mean so many of us relate to that situation and then this scene also helps to establish that sarafina has got a lot of responsibilities that fall upon her because she does not live with her direct parents so the movie will flesh that out later on but she's currently living with the uncle and her grandma uh we then pan to a isare inspired mirror scene i mean you could argue that isare was inspired by sarafina i mean I mean, I love both of them, but, you know, you could argue it. And then the first musical pops in, and it's a very, very nice song. I'm very much impressed by the musical numbers in this one, because, you know, they're very relatable. Obviously, I cannot play them for copyright reasons, but the cinematography, the directing, the dancing, the actual songs and their meaning, and them being able to capture the times and the feeling and the mood, I think is very, and it's, it's full of energy and life, I think. Yeah, they did it very, very well. And Bongeni Ngema, yeah, was a legend for that reason. And then obviously the ANC government, you know, spoils the fun. By the way, I, we just need to get this out the way right now. I'll be calling these mother ANC from now on because I, I, I mean, I heard that in South Africa, the problem is and always has been and always will be the ANC. So these is in white and jeeps and vans will be called the ANC government. <laughs> and then the movie introduces the creepy 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 cop character sabela constable sabela to be specific i i mean i remember this this but anyway we'll get into it he's trying to get information from sarafina and her friends on who actually burnt the school keynote as well it's spelled sarafina exclamation mark so am i supposed to say sarafina like what am i I, you, know, I, you know what? I don't know, man. It's a musical, maybe? I don't get it. And then it obviously pans out to this marvelous, marvelous shot with the principal fuming with smoke settling in the background. And I think the symbolism is very, very important. And, you know, credit to, like, you know, the directing and the cinematography in this movie. And the principal, by the way, drops this amazing gem of a line. If anyone here is responsible for this, I want to say this to you. Why don't you blow out your own brains? And then obviously the NC soldiers are deployed to, you know, keep peace. <laughs> uh, Whoopi Goldberg's character is introduced uh, to do a little morning prayer. Fun fact as well, Whoopi apparently was the first African-American actress to do a movie in South Africa. Don't fact check me on that one. Please don't. But if I'm correct, credit me. <laughs> She obviously conducts the morning prayer and she does some voodoo Jedi mind trick stuff and she does this. Halloween. And 
this. And then she teleports to this man. I, 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 I mean, it's a musical, I guess, but it ain't, it ain't fiction. It, it ain't fiction, Whoopi. Whoopi, Whoopi must have been pacing. And then we cut to the classroom scene where Whoopi is a history teacher and she's imparting history to her students. I'm not the one saying this, but and, white people buckle up. Buckle up for this this journey that you're about to go into because. And what color was Adam? White. White? Who says so? I never saw that in the Bible. Did you see it in the Bible? No, it doesn't say that. It says God created man in His own image. Yep. And the soldiers also like patrol the school with guns, and then they introduce crocodile. Fun fact: This is Doja Cat's actual father in real life. Is it relevant? I, I, I maybe. I, I mean, do with that information or whatever you want. A crocodile gave birth to a cat. I'm silly. I know. I know. But yeah, yeah. Anyway, they introduce Zombies' character and is very revolutionary. And I mean, to be fair, they have to be a few revolutionary, you know, characters in the movie. I mean, they call them troublemakers, but revolutionaries. Uh, yeah, and you know, young people, he goes on in the speech about, you know, young people and what they have to do. And I, of course, the answer is burn. I mean, they're young, they're frustrated, they've got energy. I mean, what, what other solutions do you give them? They establish that there's a music show that they have to stage in like six weeks. Some tomfoolery occurs with one of them dropping this other gem of a line. Happy ending. Killer disease comes to South Africa, but only the poor get it. <laughs> Which I strongly do not condone. I, I, it's hilarious, I know, but I, that, no, they went too far with that. And then this other guy also drops this other line. Jesus comes back. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy laughs a bit too hard. I mean, come on. And then the classes they chat about schooling and what does it mean to them and do they value their education and this was kind of the sentiment at the time where the black students did not want to learn Afrikaans because you know political reasons I mean it's fair and then there's a cut to young versus old in terms of like thought processes where the young people want to boycott white established businesses in the community but the elders they just want to you know go about their lives and they want to buy you know, essentials for their families. And then, you know, that obviously leads to like a debate outside one of the stores. But the ANC government comes in Tokyo drifting into that fucker, bruv. Yo, those came in hot. And then they did not take no questionnaires. They did not do no surveys. They just came out shooting in all directions. They didn't shoot, you know, but they were laying down the law unnecessarily. I mean, excessive force, guys. Have you heard of that? Oh, and then also as well, another thing that they also do a social commentary on is that Sarafina, because her mom lives so far away, she has to do a long commute. There were a few forms of transportation and the train. That's why it's so important in South African culture. And then we cut to Sarafina's mom, who is the legendary and talented and amazing and gifted Miriam Makeba. Now, I have a problem with this movie because... It brought in Miren Makeba and I mean, talk about talent, talk about excellence, but she doesn't sing once in this movie. Like what's the point of having a musical with Miren Makeba and she doesn't utter a single note? That's the biggest crime that this, that, that, that's, that. <clears throat> Missed opportunity there. And happiness turns into like frustration and, and her being rebellious because as much as she's here and she's seeing her mom, it hits her hard that, you know, that's, I, this is where I come from. And then this is where my mom is. And she's helping out the quote unquote enemy, which is, you know, the white folks. And that manifests itself in a basically a teenage rant, uh, which is kind of understandable. I mean, these are all teenagers at the end of the day, kids. And then again, it goes into a very emotional back and forth about how her dad also passed away because he had to fight the revolution and how now the mom has to do this because she's a widower she's a widowee widow but she has you know four kids including Sarafina, and they have to eat and they have to go to school so this is what she has to do 
to provide for them because they do not have a father. You know, you know, I, I tried to keep this light, guys. You know, I tried to like bring jokes into the situation. I like, you see this. I had memos, bro. I was, I came in hot with them jokes, but. <laughs> 30 minutes into this, not even 30 minutes, huh? yeah, 30 minutes into this thing, and oh my, there was no joke inside. There, there is no joke inside. I don't know why this is like a fond memory in my childhood. This was sad. But then we cut to the constable, that <laughs> assaulting Crocodile for, you know, him suspecting that he knows the people or was part of the people that actually burned down the school, one of the classrooms. Obviously, the ANC soldiers are just there watching. Because, you know, the ANC are lazy, man. They, you know, they, they don't want to do no work. So they were just... And and constable. Oh, constable. My goodness. And then Sarafina actually goes to uh, Whoopi Goldberg's house, the teacher, obviously, and sees her with her assumed, presumed husband. I, I don't. They never flesh it out in the movie. She's entered into the house. She tries to pour some tea waterfalls and then she discovers that skiriri da da kiret chopper she basically finds a gun I, I mean i try i'm trying to include the 2000s into this chat but she she finds a gun a gun whoopi tries to explain to her that she doesn't accept violence but she understands that that can be a means to an end she's never held the gun she doesn't intend to but if she has to she might she, she might just put out that eat and just get her da da da. I'm a, <laughs> whew, she might wave it in all directions. I mean, there's an argument for her doing that. And then we cut to the ANC government in the middle of the goddamn night, coming in and collecting some music. Spoiler alert, that's the last time you're going to see some music. He pops up years later as an idol's judge. So we might, we might say it worked out for him. And then... Whoopi advises the students that, hey guys, snitches, get them stitches. Because, I mean, how do they collect, you know, Somizi's character? So, uh, Sarafina goes to church, little brother runs away, chases little brother, and then little brother sees guitar with a constable. Sarafina confronts the constable, and the constable basically gives out this spiel saying that he's the good guy and he's here to clean up the streets and what would they be without him? I, I think I think I think that'd be fine, my guy. I think that that survive. I think that 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 make come on, constable. Do better. Do better. Stand up. <laughs> Stand up. Stand up. And then the squad comes in rolling deep. Yeah, they roll in the deep and then they confront uh, guitar's character who's chilling outside his house by himself playing a guitar and yeah this was a tense scene the sad part about this was i'm gonna come out i'm gonna I'm I'm come out and i'm gonna just i'm gonna just say it. i shed a tear all two two tears max two two just two not three not four two tears maximum i think it was even one and a half tears that i actually shared if i'm being honest if i, if, if I was counting if y'all need like the specifics and guitar's character goes into this monologue on how the constable oh my days it's so sad guitar's dad is crippled constable sabela used that against him by saying that back in the day they used to take out the weak and leave them in the forest oh man i, I you, yeah. it's it's so sad i don't even Watch the movie if you want to see it. I am. Um, uh, I fell apart. Anyway, we cut to the next day, and Whoopi Goldberg is collected by the ANC, and for obvious reasons. I mean, oh, she before she's even collected, she does this mind Jedi trick that she's been doing all along, and she silences the students. I think. I mean. Can I just do this and get subscribers? Come on, guys. It's subscribed. Ah, I need that whoopee magic. Anyway, she tells Sarfina that she should go get that skiriri kikiku, the gun. She should go get the gun and hide it, basically. And yeah, Sarfina then. Yeah, but before that, oh my days, they take whoopee, the students go crazy and... I mean, you guys see where we're going with this. That's basically the last time you see Whoopi. And then the next day, the substitute teacher come, shows up. This fucker right here. And he's got an attitude. I don't know why he's got an attitude. 
no one's fighting you my guy what what's your agenda here anyway he antagonizes the students because they ask simple questions i mean like where's our teacher you don't have to come at me with this attitude i just want to know where my teacher is he antagonizes the students and then all hell breaks loose i mean it escalates quick ali escalated quickly they cut to having a funeral for you know the foreign kids and obviously the ANC government is still watching them so i mean they just can't catch a break bro like i don't understand like at every single event where else do they show up at your wedding come on guys at this moment i have to pause because i thought that this was a happy movie i i i just remember seeing and dancing when i was younger and i just i I didn't realize. I didn't understand the undertones and the actual message that came with this movie as a youngling. And my goodness, this is like a tragic tragic story. And then they cut to one of my favorite scenes in the movie. I mean, this shows the great directing and the cinematography that was involved in creating this movie because this man just nonchalantly just walks in on this march like that and he gives them a final warning. Not one, not two, just final warning. Just guys So final warning. <laughs> I mean these these ANC chaps will just were wilding like no no lie. The students obviously say nah bitch, you get out of here. And uh yeah. So what then happens is that the two parties come together and they have constructive and informative chats that are transformative and bring people together and nah they they just shoot bro. They just they just they just wave that thing bro it's it's i mean what else was going to happen i mean i mean come on come on it's the nz government <laughs> i have a hot take on this because this is when the mainstream media tends to show up with their cameras and you know and start reporting on the situation as if the story started at that point when people started to vandalize and burn and riot and they don't actually give the nuances that made people get to that point and we also like to ask ourselves why are they burning down their own communities and uh, closing down their own roads because nothing happens if people don't do that unfortunately they're not given a, a voice unless they riot and i don't know man and it's it's just it's just sad and i wish we we were more i i i wish we were more i just wish we we try to understand each other more instead of like you know talking over each other and asking condescending or like rhetorical questions without actually trying to understand the other side and making them seem like they're crazy when they do the things that they do i mean i mean is it is it really a hot take or is it always that just common sense mainstream media try try to you know stand up Constable Sabella kidnaps Guitar and almost kills him. I don't know why this this scene was actually I, I mean it, it's a catalyst for what happens next, but other than that, I don't know where they collected him. I don't know what what they were doing with him. I don't know what do they still need this kid for. Anyway, they leave him on the side of the road and and then the gang in the night, in the middle of the night, they go to, you know, Constable's residence and that's another shocking thing. These people live in your community. How are you doing this to community people? Oh, bro. Anyway, constable flies out the back. <laughs> constable uses the back room and he runs away. I know I'm laughing, but this is where it ends. He flies out the back and they catch him and long story short. <sighs> I mean, I don't know. I, they they burn him. They burn him. I, I, I rip off the bandit, guys. It's 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 that movie. Uh so I was doing a lot of research on this movie and I had to do like a lot of online uh reviews and one thing that came up a lot was that reviewers commented on how Sarafina did not how the movie did not show Sarafina having remorse or regrets from this incident. 
I don't know. You guys can tell me. Do you, if you did watch the movie, did you feel that? Because to me, she felt indifferent. And I don't know if that's good enough or is the movie supposed to make her. I, I mean, but before we even go far, yes, it's wrong what they did. Definitely. So they should not be burning people. I think that's mob justice. And I do not condone that in any way, shape or form. But you, and you can't fight fire with fire. You can't fight two wrongs to make a right. I mean, that, that can't be the case. But should Sarafina have felt... Because she was just she was just chilling there. She, she, she just she was indifferent. She was mad. I, I mean, and I, and, I, and I get it. A lot of things are happening. You're emotional. And most of the time you're reactive. And I don't know. I don't know. And then the next day, again, the ANC comes in hot. Tokyo drifting and collecting everybody it was the oprah winfrey show because everybody was getting collected a every single person was just getting collected one of the that that <laughs> he picks out sarafina and she because she's quote unquote one of the troublemakers and she is interrogated by this other mother <laughs> and he oh this guy bro i, I, I know there's like probably good white actors but they do portray these sons of <laughs> You want to just mm, snap a neck or two. But I don't condone violence. Don't fight fire with fire. Peace. What would my diva do? There we go. We're back. Anyway, so he interrogates her and they go on this dialogue and he lets it spill that Whoopi Goldberg's character is dead, basically. And oh my days. Ugh. The third tier. The third tier came out of me. So th three tiers in total in this movie. So, yeah, then it was, then it was, no more tears from me. So, <laughs> uh, Sarafina goes straight to her mom. I mean, where else is she going to go? Uh, and she enters the, she enters the residence of where her mom lives. And this lady over here, this lazy, this, this nice lady over here does not know how to read the room because she gives her one of these. No, bitch. not not the time. Not not not, not the goddamn time. I, I'm being too harsh on it. But and also this like represented the stark difference between you know the have and have nots in South Africa. And you could even argue that that still is the case, even though you know it's more black people in the have departments. But there's still that you know dire uh what do you call it a wage gap? I don't know what you call it. The have and have not is like night and day. Again, I did a video on it, so you can, yeah, probably link it. I'll link it again. And then, then this leads to like a full circle moment with the mom. Then Sarafina appreciates her mom more because she understands that her mom being a worker and coming here and living here and not being home. And that is a sacrifice in itself. And that makes her a hero in her mom's eyes because that's how... Her mom is fighting. Her dad fought in another way. He lost the fight. He lost his life. But this is how the mom is fighting. She's still fighting for them. She's still fighting for them to eat, to have education, to, you know, have an opportunity in this life thing. So I think that was a, you know, good full circle moment. They bonded. Sarafina went back home. She embraced the rest of the family. Uh, and then she also threw away that heat because, you know, there's still that baggage that she still has, which is the gun that will be, you know, still had. In overall, this is a good movie. It's a great movie, actually. I'd say I think it's a classic. It's just that I just was not mentally prepared for this. Ooh. Emotional, damn it! And I don't know. Did you guys watch this movie? Are you planning on watching it now? And what do you, what are your thoughts on it? I I, I strongly. I strongly recommend this movie. And by the way, this is not a this is not a review thing. I'm not gonna give it like medals or anything like that. I'm trying to do this new format. Hopefully you guys liked it. Hopefully you guys are still watching. If you are, do me this one favor. Whoopi Goldberg that comment, like, subscribe button, share this. I mean, come on guys. Come on, guys. Help and out. And yeah, thanks for watching. Peace.